One, two. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my duty this morning is to pray, but I've been asked to say two words uh, before I pray. And uh, the first is certainly to express our heartfelt sympathies on behalf of Alma, your neighbor, who could not be here this morning, and of course, on behalf of my family as well, and all. Three of us are here today, and my sister. Um, there are a lot of things that we could say about Rose. A lot. A lot of good things and a lot of true things. But since my job is not to eulogize or to preach, I will just focus on one. Uh, and that is this. Rose was positive. She was a woman who possessed great faith. And we are next door neighbors, we were next door neighbors, and on mornings I could hear Rose worshiping, playing worship songs, listening to preachers, including myself. Uh, sometimes I would hear her laughing and I would always wonder what was she laughing at? Uh, but I'm gonna miss that. I'm going to miss that. But what I, what I will say and close is this. According to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, 
Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. To me, that encapsulates Rose Vanderpool. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we're not pleased that you took Rose from us at this time. But we do find consolation in the fact that she is with you. There is no doubt in our mind. There are no questions in our mind in that regard. For we know that she made her calling an election sure. So if she has to be anywhere other than with us today, we are glad that she is with you. And there is no pain. There is no sickness. There are no regrets. She is forever in the presence of her king. But Lord, as we think on her life today, as we remember the legacy of faith that she has left, being positive in the midst of serious challenges and adversity, being positive and full of faith for her husband and for, for Greg and Sharice, oh God. We know that she has left behind a legacy for all of us to embrace. And Father, I want to learn to be a man of faith like she was a woman of faith. And we pray today, God, not for Rose, because she's good. But we pray for those that she's left behind. And Lord, my prayer is not that you be with them. My prayer is that you remind them that you are with them. For God, you said you would never leave us and you would never forsake us. So grant them your comfort. Grant them your peace. Grant them your strength. And grant them the faith that Rose has left behind to operate in their lives on a daily basis. Not just for salvation, but for life itself. And Father, we pray for her mom and siblings and her loved ones who she has left behind. And we may have questions in our mind, but we trust in your sovereignty with the understanding that once we put our lives in your hand, it is up to you to decide whether we will stay and whether we will go. So we humbly submit under your mighty hand and we say thank you for the 61 years that you lent us this beautiful flower. And so God, we ask your corporate blessing on every person here and those watching via live stream. We ask, oh God, that you will indeed endow us with the faith that she had and let this legacy live on in our lives for many years to come. So we commit her family, we commit her loved ones into your hands and ask, oh God, that you will minister your strength and your grace in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Please be seated. At this time, we want to invite uh, Rudy Burke to give a poetic tribute. Good morning to all, um, to my family and my sister's husband and her children as well. This is a tribute written by my mom to, for the family and the friends of Rose, and it is entitled Moments. Live in the moment, just take it all in. Pay attention to everything, right there, right then. To George, don't let your mind wander to what is coming next. Cherish this moment and give it your best. To Sharice, don't let tomorrow make, your, make you rush through today. Our too many great moments will just go to waste. 
to Gregory, and the person you are with at the moment you share. Give them your all and focus. Be totally there. To my sisters, Margaret, Eudine, Alicia, my brothers, Nathaniel, Alfred, and myself, laugh till, the, till it hurts. Let the tears drop. Fill up each moment with all that you've got. To my uncle, Wilson, um, O'Neill, and my auntie, Yerlene Virus, who has passed on. Don't miss the details. Let, the lesson is there. Don't get complacent. Stay sharp and aware. To all my sisters, friends, and family, it came, it came and take but a moment to change your life, life's path. And once it takes by, there's no going back. In just 60 seconds, you can make a new friend, find your true love, or see, see a life start or end. You become who you are in those moments you live. And the growth, nothing it take, is taken, but how much you will give. From my sister to all of you who are here with me and watching her go. Life is just a moment, so precious and few. Whether valued or squandered, I know my loving sister would, say, would want to say thanks and goodbye to all of you. Thank you. We'll now have the first scripture reading, Psalm 121, and this will be read by Cherise Vanderpool. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Here ends the reading. Amen. Let us all now stand and sing the hymn, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Ear of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my Sing my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of on my sight angels descending bring from above echoes of a mercy whispers of love this is my story this is my song praising on my Submission, all is at rest. I in 
You may be seated. Kindly follow along in your program for the remainder of the service. We'll now have the second scripture reading, Psalm 23, read by Gregory Vanderpool, followed by the eulogy with the family, and a solo, No More Nights, by His Excellency, Reverend Dr. Ferdinand Nichols. Thank you. Good morning. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the folly of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou, perp thou pre purpose a table before us, bef sorry before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We're here this morning to celebrate, to celebrate the life of Rose Vanderpool. I've known my wife, Rose, for well over 40 years. We were married for 35 of those years. Rose was a faithful Christian, devoted wife, and a loving mother to Sharice and Gregory. Rose dedicated her life to serving the Lord raising our children and ensuring the place we call home was more than four walls. She filled it with warmth, security, and an atmosphere of love. Always one to lead by example, she constantly admonished and encouraged us all to pursue our goals and fulfill our dreams. No task was ever too daunting or effort wasted when it came to helping us as a family in realizing our dreams. Rose had many roles, wife, teacher, mother, instructor, preacher, friend, counselor, all of it she embraced selflessly. Rose possessed an amazing sense of humor and could often be heard engaging in hearty laughter as testified by Reverend Philip. Just ask my neighbors or any of her former work colleagues. Never want to complain and always inclined to see the positive side of a person or situation. She was loved by many for her endearing acceptance as well as her warm and considerate nature. Even in her most challenging of times, Rose displayed his depth to her faith and character I could only hope to emanate. Rose's thoughts were not of herself, but her loved ones. Admonishing me not to worry, the children will be fine saying to me, you are here for me, but I don't know who will be there for you. And to Sharice, I'm sorry to put this on you. I am therefore left with the knowledge and satisfaction that my wife is without doubt in a better place. 
because of her faith and because of how I witnessed the embrace of death. Kind of feel like a lot's already being said. Um, for those of you who knew my mom, you would know that she loved plants and she loved cooking. She loved fashion. She always wore heels. She loved the color red. And she always wore red lipstick, even at home. She always had an appreciation for the finer things. And I, um, I found this newspaper article from March 2008 um, called Pride in Parenting Raised by a Rose, encouraging your child to, school in, to excel in school and in life. And um, I think it just touched on a lot of points about like who she was as a person. I'm just kind of, I'm just wanting to highlight some of those. My mom was always extremely, she was always extremely encouraging and kind. And it says here in the article, she was an encouraging parent. And thank you, thank you. Um, And she was always supportive and present. And Greg, Greg is quoted as saying, she's good, she's very supportive. She's always there for us. She's very caring about all that we do and how we perform. And she always congratulates us on our achievements. She was gracious and she was truly, she was full of love, full of, unconditional and sacrificial love. And it wasn't just for her family, but, but for everybody. And she was asked about stress and how she deals with stress. And, and her response was, we just love each other and we do things together. Um, sorry. As mentioned before, she was full of faith. And she was full of gratitude. And the article says she prayed through every crisis and she talked about the Lord as she would talk of a best friend. She was strong. She was a pillar of strength. And she endured and she persevered. She was hardworking. And she was always a light to others. And I know that she touched the lives of everyone that she interacted with. Good morning once again. So I would like to just conclude by saying, it is ultimately the experience we leave behind on people's lives that defines us. It was a privilege and honor to have experienced you as a mother a teacher, and a friend. I'm so grateful I got to share this with most, if not all, the people in this room. Thank you for your patience, unconditional love, and support in all of my life's ventures. And I know you will continue to do so from on high. Thank you. Good morning. First of all, let me, on behalf of our family, extend our deepest condolences to you, George and Sharice and Gregory, whom I've just had the honor of meeting for the very first time. I want to say that while these are moments of grief, there are also moments of rejoicing. 
The Bible tells us in the 115th Psalm, or should I say the 116th Psalm, make sure I get this right, 116th Psalm in the 15th verse, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I particularly like the way the Passion Translation puts it. It says this, when one of God's holy lovers dies, it is costly to the Lord touching his heart. I love that. God is touched this morning by the passing of Rose. If you were to ask me how I would describe Rose, I would use one word, polished. You can put that into any category you wish. I have never forgotten her laughter, her smile, her words of encouragement. Every time I stepped off the stage, having done a song, she would be there to give me a word of encouragement. George, she will be missed. But the word of God by which we live tells us that we do not sorrow as those who have no hope. But if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, then also they who died in him will God bring with him. So this is but a temporary departure. You will see her again. And my goodness, what rejoicing that will be. And I'll, I'll hesitate dropping into the song because I'm tempted to do so many different ones this morning. But George has asked me to do a particular one and I'll do that, George. God bless you, my friend. Timeless feet, earth and heaven will pass away. It's not a dream. God will make all things new that day. Gone is the curse from which I stumbled. Evil is banished to eternal hell. No more night, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again. Praises to the great I am, and we will live in the light of the risen one. See all around, all the nations bow down to sing. The only sound of the praises to Christ our King. Slowly the names of the book are read. I know the King, there's no need to dread. Crying again, praises to the great I am. We will live light of the risen well. See over there, there's a mansion prepared. For me, where I will live with my Savior 
That's the conviction of your heart. Can you say praise the Lord today? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God says, Jesus says, he's gone to prepare a place for us. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And we believe this morning that God's promise has been made real in the life of Rose. And we are confident we know where she is. And I trust that before this service is completed, or at some time during the day, that if you don't know and you don't have that assurance, that you will also know that when your time comes to leave, there will be no more night, no more pain, no more crying again. Praise the Lord. Praise God. On behalf of our founding pastor, Pastor Rosie Williams, and the board, our senior pastor, the elders of this church, the congregation, we want to extend our deepest condolences to George and family ensuring you of our prayers that God will continue to support you, strengthen you during these days. We acknowledge the presence of, our, of Reverend Susan Ellis from the All Souls Anglican Church this morning. We're glad that you are here to support this family in their time of bereavement. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that we can come into your house this morning on this sad occasion, but yet we rejoice because we know, oh God, that your word is true. And when one of your loved ones go to be with you, our hearts rejoice. And we sorrow not as those who have no hope, but we know, God, that there is hope beyond the grave. And so we pray this morning as these thoughts are shared from your word, Father, that these thoughts will find a fruitful ground, will bear fruit for the honor and glory of your precious name. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. It's a scripture verse that's familiar, but I want us to be reminded of it this morning at Rose's home going. Hebrews 9.27, it says, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Death is real. It is no respecter of persons. And one thing we can be certain of is death. There are many uncertainties in life, but there is one thing we can be certain of, and that is death. 
As scripture says, it is appointed unto men, all men, once to die, but after this, the judgment. Death is real, it's no respect of persons. It touches every home, regardless of color, status in society, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you are upper class, middle class, saint or sinner, it is appointed unto man once to die. It's an appointment that we all must keep except the rapture takes place. Death is real and death is certain. Death is sometimes sudden and is seldom welcome because it brings pain, it brings sorrow, it brings separation. Death entered the universe because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve, whom God instructed in Genesis, you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. And since Adam represented the human race, all humanity inherited the sentence of death. What is death? Death is the separation of the spirit from the body. And it's far more than physical. It is also spiritual. The separation of the spirit from God for all eternity. Spiritual or eternal death are for all who are outside of the grace and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. According to Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, we are told the wages of sin is death. And there is another side to that verse that says the gift of God is eternal life. When we accept God's gift of salvation, even though we die physically, we will receive eternal life. For Jesus said, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. And he that believes on me, even though he die, yet shall he live. And we are confident that that verse has been made real in the life of Rose. As she took her last breath, she was absent from this body, but present with her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He that believes on me, even though he die, yet shall he live. When you think of death, you should ask yourself some questions, one of which is, what is the most important thing in my life? What is the most important thing in my life? To the student, is it getting a good education? so I can have a good job, a career of my choice, to the adult? Is it having the home of your dreams, having the perfect family, and all that this world has to offer? For Jesus asks a very important question. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul. Only one life will soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. In light of the reality and certainty of death, only what has eternal value really matters. Nothing is wrong with having a good education, having a great career, 
And having all that this world could offer materially, nothing is wrong with that. But if in life we just concentrate on those things and not on what matters eternally, then we are losers. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and all that it has to offer and loses his soul? Death causes us to consider the fact that in this life, we should cherish each other. We should express our love and gratitude while we have each other in words as well as actions. It's good to have eulogies, but the person who has gone cannot hear what we are saying. But whilst we have life, we express love and gratitude in words as well as in actions. Death causes us to consider the fact that we should not hold grudges and unforgiveness in our hearts. We must learn to say, I'm sorry, forgive me. Mend the broken fences in your relationships so that when death comes, we will have no regrets. Let us think of life as a preparation period. Life is short compared to eternity. God gave Rose 61 years some have more and some have less. But in Psalm 39, the psalmist says, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be, whether it's 60, 70, 80, or more. Remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered. How fleeting my life is. The psalmist goes on to say, you have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, each of us is but a breath. And our life is like a vapor. James 4.14 says, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time, and then it vanishes away. At the end of life's journey, what matters most are things we have done that have eternal values. And I can't stress that enough. All that we have in this life cannot be compared to eternity. Therefore, we need to make sure that in our lifetime, we value the things of eternity that matter most. How you have taken care of your soul is very important. That's the only part of you that will live on forever. For it houses, our body houses our spirits and our souls which are eternal. How you have prepared for your exit from the world is very important. How was your relationship with Christ? which is the only thing that you can take with you out of this world. It doesn't matter what you have now, but when your time comes to exit this world, all you can take with you is your relationship with Jesus Christ. How have I lived to prepare for my exit? Because death is real and certain, we should live our lives in preparation for that journey 
we must take from earth to heaven. Psalm 90 and verse 12, the psalmist made a request of God. He says, teach us to number our days carefully so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. So the wise thing to do as we consider our mortality is to prepare to meet our God because that's certain. It is important that we prepare for our appointment with death. You see, in this life, we prepare for many events. We prepare for births, we prepare for weddings, we prepare for other things. But preparation for eternity is the most important event that we should prepare for. We prepare by thinking hard about death. Some persons don't like to think about death. They put it off, put it away. But as we prepare for eternity, we need to think about death and prepare for our time of exit. Prepare mentally, prepare whatever else that has to be done. But especially, we prepare spiritually for our time when we would leave this world. How do we prepare? Place your faith in the only one who conquered death. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. He offers us eternal life. He took our sins in his body on the cross so that we can experience forgiveness of sin and meet him as our savior and not as a judge. For every, Romans 10, 13 tells us, everyone who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And even now you can call where you are. For John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God loves us, and he gave his very best, his very best to ensure that we will have eternal life and that we will not perish. Life is full of uncertainties. Life is full of valley experiences and circumstances which can cause fear doubt, and given us sometimes reason to be depressed, to despair, and to give up hope. This life is full of uncertainties. Sometimes life itself becomes hopeless. But I'm here to let you know today that no matter how difficult the situation, there is always reason to hope. Why? Because God is still in control of this world and he still rules in the affairs of men. And for George and family, Rose is going would cause you to question, to wonder, may cause you despair, may cause you depression, but I want to encourage you not to give up hope. There's always reason to hope because God is in control. And as long as there is God, there will always be hope. Why? Because there will always be God. He will always be there. And there's never a time when he will not be there. You may not feel him, you may not sense him, but he is very much there. Today you may have many questions as to the passing of your beloved one, but I want to encourage you again not 
to lose hope. Having hope means that you are fully, steadfastly trusting and having confidence in a God who is real, a God who is all-knowing, a God who is all-powerful, a God who is able to do anything. Hope in God will enable you to go forward in difficult times with a quiet and continuing faith that no matter what happens, God will be there to see you through. Rose had this hope which she held on to steadfastly, as George shared, never complaining, never questioning God through her illness. But the person who trusts in Jesus as Savior has an abiding hope in Christ, who is the believer's anchor. He is the believer's unchanging state headfastness, sure, so that though the storms of life rage all around you and you experience turbulent times, you may rock and you may be shaken, but you will not be moved because you are securely anchored to the rock, Christ Jesus. If you are not anchored to this rock, things will shake you cause you to be moved. But if you are anchored, you have a hope that is steadfast, that is sure, that is unwavering. That anchor is Jesus. Life is too short and uncertain to live an undecided life. I implore you today to choose eternal life. You see, God has given us the ability to choose, and we can choose either to live for him or to live for ourselves. We can choose either to surrender to his will and submit ourselves to him or to keep going our own way. The choice is ours, but there are consequences in our choices. If we choose to serve Jesus, we know that one day when we die, we go to be with him. If we choose not to, the consequences are fatal. I implore you today, to choose eternal life, where you will ensure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, according to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 15, which tells us, whosoever was not found written in the Book of Life was cast into the lake of fire. Tough words but words not to be taken lightly, for it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. How is your life today? Where are your priorities? Are your priorities only in the things present, in the things of this world? Or are you preparing to meet your God? Testing times will come. Trials will come. You'll experience losses. But if you have Christ as your anchor and your sure hope, you will be able to survive the storms of life because your anchor is fixed in Jesus Christ who says, I will never leave you, and I will never, ever forsake you. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? I offer you this anchor this morning in the light of the fact that it is appointed unto men once to die,
But after this, the judgment, make sure that you are prepared to meet your God. Let us pray. If you are here this morning and you do not know Jesus as your Savior, you cannot say that you have a hope. You cannot say that if your time should come to leave this world, that you will go to be with the Lord Jesus and experience eternal life, a life that will never, ever die. If you do not have this hope, if Jesus is not your anchor, and you would like Jesus Christ to come into your heart, you would like to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are saved, that you have received the gift of God, which is eternal life. I want you to repeat this prayer after me as I pray. Oh God, my heavenly Father, I come to you. I come to you through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Your Son. I ask you, oh God. I ask you, oh God, to forgive me. To forgive me for all the things that I have done. For all the things that I have done that are contrary. That are contrary to what you, to desire, what you desire for me. For me. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my heart. Wash me. Wash me. In your precious blood. In your precious blood. I accept you. I accept you. As my personal as my Lord, personal and, Lord Savior. and Savior. I confess today. I, I confess today. That I am your child. I am your child. Give me the grace. Give me the grace. To walk with you. To walk with you. To live for you. To live for you. Until I see you, until I see you, face to face, face to face. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning that your Holy Spirit will make your word real to the hearts of those who have listened and who have heard. And I pray, God, that through the days and through the months, Lord, that you give to them that they, Lord, will continue to make choices that will cause them to be prepared to meet you as a savior, as a friend, and not as a judge. God, as we go through this life, help us to remember that it is appointed unto each one of us to die, but after this, the judgment. Help us to live for you, to please you, to put you first, in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to ask the family if they will stand at this time as we pray for them, all the family. Praise the Lord. Eternal God and our Heavenly Father, we pray for this family this morning. God, we ask you to undergird each one of them with your divine strength. Lord, we pray that they will sense that underneath of them are your everlasting arms supporting them and guiding them. I pray, God, that you will bind them together in unity and in love. I pray, Father, that you will help them to sense your comfort and your peace, knowing that all is well with Rose. God, I pray that even, Lord, as they are bereaved and as they will go through their time of mourning, that, Lord, they will do so with that blessed hope and blessed assurance. And, Lord, that they will continue, Lord, to serve you and to live for you in spirit and in truth. So Lord, we release your peace in your presence. We release your comfort into their lives today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's all stand as we sing the hymn. 
it is well with my soul. The sky not 
to the grave is our goal. Oh, trump of the angel, oh, voice of the Lord, blessed hope, blessed rest of my soul. It is well.